Hi everybody, good to be with you. Matt Noyce here with your One Degree Outside Insights video. This is where we go to the next level with the meteorology and say what's really driving the weather in the coming days. Of course, it's all eyes on the thunderstorm risk for our Friday. Right now, current analysis shows cold front back out across the Great Lakes. That cold front is destined to arrive here during the course of your Friday afternoon. And when you get a cold front that slices into a warm and humid air, you generate thunderstorms. A couple of things going on. Here is the warmth and humidity building for tomorrow. Dew point temperatures may near 70 degrees. That's a very humid air that you'll feel during the course of the day. In a lot of southern New England, you make it through much of the day without a shower or storm, but during the afternoon and evening is when your chance goes up. Things come in sooner to northern New England. You can know that, notice that that keeps the temperature down as a result of the sooner development of showers and storms. A couple of things going on here. Two ways I can show you some available atmospheric energy for tomorrow. One of them is what we call convective available potential energy. In the meteorology world, we call it CAPE. What is that? It's thunderstorm energy. Basically, when you have the warmth and humidity, it gives you the energy to bubble up storms. We measure that in joules per kilogram, but basically, bottom line is if you see over 500, you've got an increased chance of thunderstorms. Now, notice you've got a big area tomorrow. It's running about 1,000 to 2,000. It stretches from central portions of Pennsylvania through the twin tiers of Pennsylvania and New York, the capital district of New York, near Albany, and right into the heart of New England. The farther south you go, the more that a southerly and southwesterly wind blows across the cool Atlantic waters, that limits the amount of available thunderstorm energy, which doesn't mean you don't get a shower storm. They certainly can carry out of the area where they develop, but they're less likely to generate right overhead. The other kind of atmospheric energy we watch tomorrow is the kind up at the jet stream level, and for that we've plotted it in green, yellows, oranges, reds. A couple of different areas to look at. This is the main disturbance that's coming down across Michigan. We call it a shortwave trough, a dip in the jet stream that comes in. But notice there's another lobe of energy right Riding out ahead of it. This is destabilizing the atmosphere. What time is that? That's two in the afternoon. And that's why we say, look, once you start getting a late morning, midday in the mountains and the afternoon for the rest of us, the showers and storms will generate. I always recommend during the day tomorrow, use our app. Go to that interactive map feature where you can do the radar, do past plus future. You'll see the storms as they've been developing and then what comes after that. But in terms of breaking things down, you can see in yellow, this is where we expect to find scattered severe thunderstorms during the course of the day. Friday, the blue is where they should be more isolated severe thunderstorms. Of course, a severe thunderstorm, damaging wind gusts uh, equal to or in excess of 58 miles per hour and large hailstones. It can result lightning as a threat with any storm, right? When thunder roars, go indoors. If you can hear that lightning, the storm is close enough for it to be a threat for you. Generally speaking, tomorrow, again, I would advise using the app for the specifics tomorrow during the day, but you can see the thunderstorms and downpours developing first in New York and in the mountains. A lot of times we see things developing late morning to midday in our mountains, and then they come out of the mountains. That's exactly what what should happen during the day tomorrow. By 3 p.m., western mass is into it. We've got scattered storms coming down into central portions of New Hampshire, the main sea coast getting into this as well. And then by the time we get to the early evening, now notice the storms coming down to about the mass turnpike. We think north of the pike and north of Boston has the best chance of showers and thunderstorms as we get toward about 6 in the evening. What's interesting is if I take it at 9 p.m., it really slows down because it starts hitting that cooler Atlantic air. So in a way, if you live in southeast mass, you're a little bit more protected from the threat for severe weather. But this this poses an issue for those of you that live anywhere from Hartford to Worcester to southeast and south central New Hampshire and even southern Maine, which is that the storms slow to a crawl and they haven't yet lost the energy. Remember, that jet stream energy is still out in Michigan. So this means that the downpours may continue even if the severe weather threat goes down heading into the evening. And that's why uh, the Weather Prediction Center has highlighted the area in green, which is, again, a lot of the heart of New England, for at least a chance of flash flooding to occur. Because if you're just going to rain in the same places for hours on end in the late day and evening hours, that may result in some localized flash flooding where you get that water that can either wash out uh, some roadways in spots or certainly streams that can come above bankful. So something to keep in mind. Overnight Friday night, because that energy still has to come through, you're going to get more in the way of some showers still around, maybe a rumble of thunder into the night across southern New England. And actually, the concern is on Saturday, you might not be totally done yet from, let's say, Boston to Gloucester, south and east. This is now in the morning. You can see at 8 o'clock. By the time you get to the afternoon, all that stuff is gone. By midday, most of it's gone. But there may still be some showers kind of hanging around, particularly southeastern mass morning and still trying to pop up at midday until that energy clears through us. And you can see that does keep the 
temperatures down a little bit on Saturday. But the wind starts coming out of the north northwest. It, the air does turn less humid as the day goes on. Sunday looks absolutely exceptional. So basically second half of Saturday, but especially Sunday, really improvement comes in. Notice Sunday's highs. They're coolest at the coast because we get a sea breeze that kicks up. And by the time we get to Monday, it looks like another pretty decent day for us with highs rebounding back to about 80. Still expecting that warmth to build in for next week. We looked at that in pattern predictions earlier in the week here at one degree outside. That's the way things look for now. Stay safe tomorrow. Just if you're going to be out and about, particularly later in the day and evening, have a place to seek shelter in case the storms come calling. You'll always get that notification from our one degree outside weather app. Just search Noises one degree outside weather uh, in the app store or for Android. Just go to our homepage, one degree outside.com. Click the link at the top of the banner. Have a great day.